So here we have a couple of powers or indices that we want to play with and see if we can find the answer more exactly. So let's see what tricks we have and see if we can solve for them. So the first one is 32 to the power of 0 0.2. Now that's not something that we can solve right away necessarily, but we can rewrite this 0 0.2 as a fraction, which is more common when we're talking about indices at any rate. So we can write this as the same base, 32, to the power of 2 tenths. So now it's getting a little better. We can already simplify this to 32 to 1 fifth. So this is helpful because 1 fifth is the same as the fifth root of 32. So what times itself 5 times gives us 32? Well, that's just 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. So believe it or not, this strange indice here gives us a simple integer answer. Let's take a look at another example of something with powers or indices that we can simplify in some way. So let's look at 3 to the power of 1.1. So again, we can't find the answer for this right away, but we can change it a little bit just to see if we can find what, what we might get from there. So we can write this using the, a rule of powers as a, the same base of a sum. So if this is the same as 3 to the power of 1 plus 1 tenth, or 3 to the power of 1 plus 0 0.1, then we can say that this is a multiplication. 3 to the power of 1 times 3 to the power of 1 tenth. So this is already easy. 3 to the power of 1 is, of course, 1. Sorry, 3. And then we can say 3 to the power of 1 tenth is the tenth root of 3. So from here, we can't solve for this exactly. This is as exact as we can solve for this problem. We can find the approximate answer if we just take the, uh, the tenth root of this with a calculator. So if we say that this is 3 times 1.2, sorry, 1.12, then we can get an approximate answer. So that approximate answer is just going to be 3.36. So it helps a little bit this way, but we can find an approximate answer like that. Here we have a simple polynomial division. So it's just like long division, but with polynomials. So we start with the expression x squared minus 2x minus 8. We want to divide this by x plus 2, so by the expression x plus 2. So it looks just like long division, but it's polynomial division. Okay, so what we need to find is something that multiplies by x that can eliminate this highest order term. So it's important that we have this written in this descending order of power, of this order of the x's here. So what times x gives us x2? Well, of course, it's just x. And then we go back and we multiply this x by this terms, this quantity that we're uh, dividing by. So x times x gives us just x squared. And x times 2 gives us 2x. So what we're doing is subtracting this from here to see what we have left. So of course this has canceled that out. Great. So we have a 0 here. Negative 2x minus 2x gives us negative 4x. And we still have this negative 8 here. So now we start again. What can we multiply this x by to eliminate this negative 4? Well, of course, it's just going to be negative 4. And if we multiply this back through, we get negative 4 times x. And we're subtracting it, so it's plus, and then negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8. But it's subtraction, so it's plus. And then we have negative 4x plus 4x, negative 8 plus 8. Of course, everything's gone now. So this is our final answer. It's just this here. It's the same as factorizing, but we've done it using polynomial division. Here we have an algebraic expression that we want to factorize for. So the original expression is 2x squared minus 4xy plus 2y squared. So we have our x term our y term, and our cross term. So we're going to factorize this in the normal way. We're often used to this just being a numbers term, but that's okay because it's the same process. 
So we want to factorize this and split this into two different quantities, perhaps. Before we do that, though, we can see that we can automatically simplify just by factoring out a common factor of 2. So 2 is the only thing that's common in all three of these terms here. So why don't we start by just saying 2 times what's left. x squared minus 2xy and then plus y squared. Great. So now we're going to have an answer that's 2 times 2 quantities. So 2 times, now we need to figure out what those two quantities are. So the first term is going to be pretty easy. It's just x times x. So we're going this order of operations, but backwards. It's the normal way that we factorize. So x times x is going to give us this. Again, the second term is going to be pretty easy as well. What times what gives us x, sorry, y squared? What times what gives us y squared? Well, of course, it's just y. So positive y and positive y, of course, work. But the other thing that might work is negative y times negative y. Which one of those do we want to use? Well, then we need to look at this cross term to figure that out. So it's either two pluses or two minuses. We can see that this is a negative. We can see if we multiply this uh, out, the y times the x and the x times the y, we're going to have positives. So we need to use the negatives. So then at this point, what one might do is just pause and, and multiply this out using the normal order of operations. Go back, see if you get the same thing here. And you will. You'll get an x squared term. You'll get a y squared term. And then you'll get two cross terms, negative two cross terms. Interestingly enough, this is the same quantity as this. So we're not actually done. We probably want to write this as 2 times this perfect square of x minus y. So this is how you would write your final answer in its most simple factorized form. Here we have an algebraic equation that we want to solve for x. Everything is normal except for we have some square roots, so it might be a little bit more arithmetic in algebra. So the equation reads, the square root of x minus 2 is equal to the square root of 2 minus square root of x. So we want to get x all by itself. We don't want to have a square root. We don't want to have any powers on it. So instead of taking a square root to get rid of an x squared, we're going to take a square to get rid of the square root. So if we square both sides separately, what do we get? If we square a simple square root, we just get what's left on the inside, x minus 2. And if we square the right-hand side here, it's going to be a little different. So we need to factorize, or sorry, multiply out in the normal way of the order of operations. So the first terms, the last terms, and then the cross terms. So the first term is going to give us root 2 times root 2, which is, of course, just 2. And then we're going to get... Uh, the last term times the last term, negative root x times negative root x, which is just x. And then we're going to have a cross term, or well, we'll have two cross terms. This times this, uh, plus this times this. So we'll have negative 2 times these multiplied by each other. Negative 2 times, now we have root 2 times root x, which we can all just put together as 2x. Great. So we're getting close. We still have a root x, which is a bit of a problem but we can start to so simplify a little bit and see if, what we can do with this root x. So let's just simplify both sides a little and see what we have. So we have two terms, we have x terms, and then we have this. So let's just start by saying, subtracting a two from both sides, and we'll subtract an x from both sides. So that gives us this cleared up. So we just have on the right-hand side, negative two root two x. On this side, luckily, these x's cancel as well, and then we just get negative 4, which is great. So now we just have one x by itself. We can do a little bit of work with this to solve for x, but there's no, not going to be any problems where we have a transcendental equation in which we have an x and an x that's in the square root. So let's, to get to this x, we need to dig it out just a little. Let's divide both sides by this term here, negative 2. So of course, that just gives us what's left here, root 2 x, and then negative 4 divided by negative 2, of course, just gives us positive 2. Great, so we're almost done. Now again, we have a square root. We can square both sides to get rid of that. So square this and square this. So that gives us 2x equals 2 squared is 4. Great. And then finally, divide both sides by 2 just gives us 4 divided by 2, x equals 2. 
So that's our final answer. And since we were going, we were squaring square roots, we don't have to worry about any plus or minuses. And if we plug this back in, we'll see that we in fact get the same thing again. Uh, we have two minus two, that gives us zero. And then we plug in a two here. This is zero on the right hand side. So this is correct and that's our final answer. Here we have a complex number that we want to write in a slightly different form, a more common form. So we have a complex number 2 plus 5i divided by i. So i is of course the imaginary number where i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So we want to write this in the normal form. We want to write this as some normal real numbers, a and b, where we've split up the a is all by itself, b is just multiplied by the imaginary number. So we want to get this to look something like this. So basically what is a and b in this case? So to do that, we need to get rid of this imaginary number in the denominator. Great. It's not so hard to do that. We simply multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. The conjugate of i is just negative i. So we can take this expression, multiply by 1, or 1 in this case is negative i divided by negative i. So we're not changing the expression at all, we're just changing what it looks like. So we still have 2 plus 5i, and on the bottom, i. So what does this give us? A negative times i squared. Well, we can see i squared is just going to be negative 1. So negative times negative 1 gives us positive 1. And then in the numerator, we have negative 2i, and then we have minus 5 times i squared. i squared is negative 1, so we have a negative 1 here. So we can finally simplify one more step. We don't need to worry about the denominator anymore. It's just 1. We can multiply this negative 1 times this 5. So we get 5 from that minus, this is simplified, 2i. So in this case, a and b are 5 and negative 2. So this is the same as this original expression written in the more common form where we have some real number plus or minus some other real number multiplied by the imaginary number i. And that's the final answer.